Chaksur-mrita-mjena-tasmai-sikur-vena-maha <laughs> Bande Jagat Priyakaro Karunabhataro Bande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Gurudai Pushpavanto Chitro Sando Tamunya Bande Ham Shri Ramakrishna Abhaya Charano Sako Sukado Paramanando Sundaro Subala Priyo he Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tatva Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Vrindriye Shilvari Vaishnav Guru Parampara Ki Jaya Kantara Srimad Bhagavat Ki Jaya Gold permanent Haribo. So good morning again, everyone. I'm going to speak this morning um, from the Prakat Leela, the manifest Leela. This morning we're reading from the Aprakat Leela as it's um, related in texts like Govinda Lilamrita, stemming. A book of Krishna's Kavira stemming as it does from original verses of uh, Rupa Goswami or the uh, Krishna Bhavanamrita, another similar text, uh, Vishwana Chapati Thakur, um, and, and uh, Vrindavan uh, Kavikarapur also has uh, a similar uppercut in the text and so forth. So um, from that, Unmanifest Leela, the invisible Leela. Um, we turn today to the, the Prakat Leela. Now, I wanted to speak on a particular verse. Unfortunately, um, I send it to myself, so I have it on my screen, but um, I didn't have it in the right font, so it's unreadable, readable, illegible, um, largely um, because of diacritics. That, uh, come out in funny letters. But um, if anyone has the capacity to uh, draw the verse up on their screen from the internet, uh, that would be um, uh, Canto 10, chapter 15, verse 42. And this is one um, of three verses that we find at the end of the... 15th chapter, which begins with the glorification of Balaram on the part of Krishna and the commencement of um, Gopastami, a celebration um, centered on Krishna and Balaram becoming uh, coward boys. That means they move from the age of Kumar, childhood, to, to boyhood, Poganda. And as the chapter pro progresses, Benakasura is slain, and and the Gopas return home. Hmm? Thank you. And as they return home, hmm, um, the Leela turns from a a Poganda Leela hmm, that involves Leelas like. Slaying of Denikasura, the uh, chastising of Kaliya. Hmm? This is a chronology as um, 
understood by by Jiva Goswami and uh, uh, described in the, his Gopal Champu. It's a little bit of a different chronology than the Bhagavatam. He gives his reasoning for that, and I followed that reasoning. Sanatana Goswami doesn't follow it in his Bhagavatam commentary. But what I'm saying to you is that the Kaliya Leela, which in the chapters of the Bhagavatam comes after the slaying of Danikasura, is um, thought by Jiva Goswami with evidence from other Puranas and so forth to have occurred prior to the um, Krishna's entering into his adolescence. Hmm? Uh, so, for example, in our reading as we go forward today, we'll discuss a verse from the end of the 15th chapter where Krishna's adolescence is beginning. And in the next verse, we'll be going to the 18th chapter because the 16th and the 17th chapter about the about the, about, about Krishna's Kaliya Leela, which is actually a Poganda Leela. It's a little complicated, but just to give you the the chronology, it's thought by Jiva Goswami that Sanatan, excuse me, Sukadeva Goswami narrated just out of his ecstasy, one thought led to another, and um, he didn't necessarily pay close attention to the chronology, which is more of a fixation, if you will, in other Puranas that relate to Krishna's um, leelas. So they're not narrated out of the same, with the same feeling that Sukadev has, whose feeling hmm, um, is underscored in the verse, the verses that we are um, set here to discuss this morning. There's three of them. I'm going to just cite one, which is this, uh, there's 41, 42, and 43. So this is 42. It's in between 41 and 43. And it, it's um, the most robust of the verses with regard to the subject, that being not only Krishna's returning home, which we heard uh, this morning describing the Aprakat Leela, which is a daily affair, but here now in the context of the Prakat Leela, he's coming home from cow herding just as he turns in age from boyhood to adolescence. So it's very uh, stunning in terms of its description of the event itself and also the fact that uh, that it that just the returning, but also the fact that he's turning into an adolescent. And so is everybody else, I mean, all his friends. And on the other end, receiving end of their return, uh, so too are the young young gopis, a very head uh, spinning time. And all of you have had experience of that. Um, <clears throat> puberty, basically, is to, to put it in simple English. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> let me recite the verse and, and we'll um, proceed from there. Gam gojaras, tam gojaras churita kuntala bada barha, vanya prasuna, which erection a charu hasam. Venum quanuntam anugar upogita kirtim, gopio didrik shita di show, biagaman, 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 sameta. Now, I had a literal plus translation, if you will, of this verse. It, uh, it tells us what it says and, and all that it means to say, and uh, the kind of thoughts that it inspires in, uh, in someone like myself who, who, who reads the verse. And, um, and of course, we want the, the kind of feelings that we find, for example, in commentaries on great acharyas um, as to the meaning of the verse, which sometimes uh, seems to transcend, if you will, even the grammar, the, gr the grammar. Now, our acharyas are bent often or fixed on trying to demonstrate their feelings correspond with the grammar, but it's not always the case. And uh, from an academic point of view, that may be a shortcoming, but what the text is about is to, is to draw out from us or bring within us certain feelings. And if those, if, the, if that's the, um, is accomplished, then you have the best rendering of the verse, right? 
Prabhupada, in a similar way, used to refer to his purports as his emotional ecstasies, having read the verse, right? Which he he, he thought that the, the commentary, the purport, etc., and so on, was more important than the verses. Once in this connection, thought comes to mind, an incident, an anecdote, um, Prabhupada had suggested that um, in the early day of his um, publishing in the West, with regard to his Gita, Bhagavad Gita, the commentary that had not been finished, um, that he, that the translators or the publishers, his students could use the translations of someone else. I think Dr. Um, what is his name? I think he was a prime minister for a short period of time of uh, Rad, Dr. Radhakrishna of, of, of India, use his translations. And then um, one of the Prabhupada's disciples, maybe, maybe Hayagriva, said, uh, well, Prabhupada, you know, that would be uh, plagiary to use his translations. And Prabhupada said, what do you mean? It's Krishna's, you know, Krishna's one spoke it. <laughs> that was his response. But he said, anyway, the purport, you know, we can use somebody else's translations to, to ex expedite, you know. He was in a very, had a very strong sense of urgency, Prabhupada, with regard to his publishing and all that he was doing. Um, having been given, a, in, in a sense, a warning, even on the boat crossing the, the ocean, um, that his, his time may be um, short, um, um, uh, notice in the form of heart attack. Um, so he was really um, uh, very much driven by a sense of urgency to, to uh, fulfill the ambitions expected of him, as he thought of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and, and to just and to just give, just give people the blessing of. Uh, learning about Krishna, which he very innocently, um, he thought was just like, well, I mean, Krishna is so beautiful and charming, and there's just nobody that compares to him in his kind of spiritual naivety and purity and innocence. He just thought we just tell him about them and it's, it, surely everyone will convert. I mean, that's how he actually felt. felt. He was surprised when they didn't sometimes. Um, uh, so he said his, you know, his reports were, you know, the more more important part of the of, of the text. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, I'll read the, the, the translation here. Um, having heard, having heard the enchanting mega malarag of the Priyasaki Vamsuli, so dear to his coward friends who danced and sang in the kirtan of Harilila, the young gopis rushed in unison to the front of the crowd with unblinking eyes, longing for Shamsundar's darshan, peacock plume crowning the curls of his hair, adorned with wild flowers and decorated with goraja, the dust of the cows raised by the hooves, the dust, raised by the hooves of his dancing cows. His glance of prame in poor virag charmed the young girls, as did his beatific smile. So this, again, is Krishna now returning from the forest at the closure of his Poganda Leela. The sun is setting on his boyhood Leelas, and the sun is dawning on his Adolescent Leelas. Uh, Rupa Goswami terms this uh, sandhyam, this um, connection, this meeting, this in between um, boyhood and child as uh, Vayu Sandhi. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's being described in these three verses. I'm just going to read what the one that I've just um, just read to you. <clears throat> um, so that's the very um, dawning, the very beginning of his adolescence. It has different stages that it uh, develops through. Full, more manifest, more manifest, and full. And there are Sanskrit words for it, but um, I won't burden you with those, and I don't remember them. So, um, so here the setting again is that Krishna is returning, and um, in the context of the Bhagavatam, 
Again, this is the Prakat Leela. So what we read this morning happening every day. This is happening not just for the first time. The, the, the Krishna's youth is unfolding. Uh, we should say a word about these ages. Hmm? The Kumar, um, Poganda, and Kishore. Hmm? So childhood, boyhood, and youth. That's, um, um, prior to this, in the Prakat Leela, his Kishore has not yet manifest. It's eternal, but it has not yet manifest. There's a question, um, or it's just beginning to manifest. Uh, there's a question as to as to the nature of the upper Katlila with regard to these ages. In other words, we see in the Prakatlila that his childhood manifests, and then it's... Um, replaced, if you will, by uh, his boyhood and so on, by his adolescence in t in time, so to speak. But we're told they're all eternal at the same time. The example is often given of the sun, which is always 12 o'clock somewhere. Hmm? It's only 12 o'clock for, for a minute or a second, whatever, where you're standing, but it's 12 o'clock somewhere else. And something like that, some way to help us understand the nature of eternal alilas of Krishna. It's a very complex subject, and I've mentioned this before uh, recently. The nature of eternity and transcendence is peculiar, uh, as understood in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. There the preem is full, but it's always expanding. There are new leelas, hmm? um, even though they're all eternal. <laughs> Don't ask for you know more of an explanation that, that than um, uh, than can you know fit between your ears, and that it's good that there is more to life than um, than uh, what reason demands. Hmm? So it's a transrational reality. Eternal is just a word; it's a term we've come up with in the material world to. Um, you can find it in the dictionary. I, I've, I've experienced it. How you can explain it, I really don't. I really don't know how you will explain it. But the, the, in the effort, it falls short, I think. And in, with regard to Gaudiya Vaishnava, it's it's particularly a dynamic form of eternity compared to, let's say, something like the eternity as we may think of it of Brahman, a kind of a static, ongoing, no passing of time. Here, there is a, an apparent passing of time. And every Leela is eternal, and there are new Leelas at the same time. I, I refer again, and I do repeatedly, and attempt to try to say something more about this, that such is the nature of Prem, as described in, uh, in the Goswami's text. It's full, but it's ever expanding at the same time. It's a kind of a, um, an eternity that is celebrating itself, hmm? celebrating itself, and thereby it nourishes itself. And, and as I said earlier, well, that's good because that means there's room for new leelas, there's room for new, new members hmm, who are eternal, <laughs> whose forms are eternal, whose uh, realities are eternal, prospect is eternal, and so forth. So there's a question, at any rate, <clears throat> with regard to these different ages of Krishna as to how um, they play out in the Aprakat Leela, which you're reading about this morning, it's clear how they play out in the Prakat Leela. The, the, the childhood comes and it passes. It's replaced by the by the boyhood, and it passes and it's replaced by the adolescence. But what is the nature of the Aprakat Leela? And there are different opinions that have been given by different acharjas. Hmm? Um, Kabi Karnapur, for example, he is... A, um, at least it would appear on the face of what he's written, he is of the opinion that uh, only the uh, only the Kishore Leela of Krishna are eternally manifest in Goloka. Now, Rupa Goswami in Bhagavatamrita says, says the opposite, that all of the Leelas of Krishna are manifest in Goloka. Vishwana mm -hmm. Chakrabdi Thakur cites Rupa Goswami's Bhagavatamrita in his own um, uh, Bhagavatamrita Khan hmm? um, 
So he's of the same opinion. Jiva Goswami now gives an interesting um, uh, answer to this question that um, in, in one way may help to harmonize hmm, the, the different opinions. Um, and he says that the um, all of the leelas from the Poganda and the boyhood and so forth and the Kishwar are, are um, part of the Aprakat Leela. Hmm? But he says they're a part of the Aprakat Leela in the form of um, what's called uh, Mantra Mai Upasana. That means that there's a way of meditating on the leelas through the um, uh, employing of a mantra. So a mantra describes a certain leela hmm, of Krishna, like the killing of Kamsa, hmm, and how he's victorious, how he's very beautiful, and how he didn't really kill him anyway, but, you know, Kamsa just passed out out of out of fear, something like which he was preoccupied with for so long anyway, uh, unjustifiably, because after all, Krishna is, you know, his, his uh, rela relative, what is he, in, like a nephew or something like that, Uncle Kamsa, bad as he is, you know, Krishna wouldn't kill his uncle. Uh, so, so there are beautiful descriptions like this, or other leelas of Krishna's birth, for example, because we hear for that's another example. There are no demons in the in the, in the spiritual world. It's a similar idea. You have to understand the prakat leela that we are discussing today. The manifest leela is like a trailer of the movie of the uppercut leela. So it's a sampling of that, right? So you think, well, whatever is in the trailer is in the in the movie itself, right? Mm -hmm. The bhavas are the same. That's in one sense that they're, that they're there. But what, what, what Jiva Goswami is saying is that, is that if you take a, a mantra and you engage in, in um, mantra mai upasana, so a fixed pastime rather than a moving pastime, something like that, just a fixed picture. Like if you took one frame of the movie and isolated it and just turned that into a, photo and gazed upon it and something like this so he's saying there are there are such mantras describing um a, a frame in the picture of krishna leela and they may not be manifest but they're eternal so they're uppercut and they can be they can be contacted and experienced if you will through mantra mai um, upasana. Uh, and that way he says they are in the apricot, mm -hmm. and he, but he says the foundation out of which all of the leelas move in the apricot is Krishna's kishore, his adolescence. Mm -hmm. So he says it in different, in, in, maybe he tried to harmonize different opinions there. Um, another way, of course, to look at it is that they may be all um, manifest relative to one's own sadhana hmm, and aspiration. Hmm. So that means to say that there are many different prakashas or windows uh, simultaneously playing, hmm. like on the long distance airplanes. I'll give this example, you get this screen there and they've got all these movies and you, you could watch any one of them, they're all going on. You could be watching one and somebody else watching another one and on, next to you and so on and so forth. So they're all playing at the same time, but not everybody experiences them. So Kabhikarnapur will report on his own internal experience and meditation and so forth, and Sanatana Goswami on his, and it's another way of looking at it. <clears throat> but here we're in the, uh, again, back to the Prakat Leela, and Krishna's actually turning into a, a Kishore. He's returning, in the, in the, or the verse falls in the Bhagavatam again, from the slaying of Dena Kasura. And um, so, uh, this is a, a, a time of great uh, celebration for the cowherds who are described here as singing the glories of Krishna and Balaram. And, and so part of that, of course, um, um, given the scene aside from Krishna's adolescence, is they're particularly exuberant in celebrating the slaying of Denu Kasura on the part of Balaram. Hmm? Because to date, 
before the killing of Danny Kasur, Balaram had not showed any real prowess, but he was. Everyone was led to believe that he was very powerful because Mother Yasoda was always fostering on upon him the idea that he her about Salia and that you're the older brother and uh, you should be protecting younger brother Krishna and so on and so forth. But Krishna had had um, in the eyes of the cowards, at least in the eyes of the the young cowards in the in the, uh, in the eyes of the elders and so forth it wasn't clear that krishna had killed putina hmm? i mean putina died but they didn't really they, they, they didn't it wasn't overt that krishna had gone out and slayed her or shakatasura you know it was an accident hmm? he kicked the wheel and it, it fell off and the cart broke and, and so forth and trinaparta took him away in a windstorm and then he just fell over you know, and, uh, <laughs> and so on and so forth uh, it, it isn't. In, it isn't until Krishna's uh, calf herding leelas that 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 becomes apparent hmm, that he has this extraordinary valor, her, heroism, and uh, um, uh, uh, that, that's so attractive. It's a udipana for for Sakirasa therein. And in the middle of the well, the last part of the eleventh chapter of the of the Bhagavad's tenth canto, we find uh, the slaying of uh, Vatsasura, the calf, hmm? which was a demon appearing as a calf. But Krishna, even even him, he just kind of pulled on his tail hmm? and turned him around, and then he swirled around, and, and it wasn't clear did Krishna do that, or and so moving forward a little bit in the same chapter, then. Krishna encounters Bakasura, and Bakasura actually tried to swallow Krishna, right? And Krishna, as he said, <coughs> bifurcated him. He was like a some kind of a crane or a duck or something. He was a baka, hmm? Bakasura, and um, and this was the first time then that it was seen, hmm? witnessed by millions of coward boys. Right, to their fascination, and uh, and and with great uh, uh, jubilation and, and excitement, but look at the prowess of Krishna. Well, they were very proud of him, slaying the Bakasura and so forth. So, um, a very big uh, event. This is just as he's herding cows. Just he's going to. Turn into the Brahma of Mohan Leela, he'll enter the mouth of Agasura, and so forth. So these things occurred. By this time, the point is, the cowards had seen, in no uncertain terms, the prowess of Krishna. Meanwhile, Balaram is being, you know, heralded as the protector of Krishna, and so forth. So they egged him on in the Dinakasura Leela to free the fruits of the tall, um, tall palms. Mm -hmm. In Taliban, they might taste them, uh, and they egged Balaram on. They pressed his ego, and it's a very charming section of the Bhagavatam. In the midst, that's in the midst of his Poganda Leela. But so they're coming home now, and such leelas have been performed. According to Bhagavatam, they're just coming home after the slaying of Danikasura, and so the so the, so the, the excitement that we hear about in the verse where they are described as, um, well, so many things, singing the glories of Krishna and Balaram, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so um, his Anugai, Anu, what is it? Anugai or Upagit Kirtim, right? His followers, his Anu, his his followers engaging in kirtan. So this is one part, one type of the lila kirtan that they were um, engaged in, celebrating, singing, reciting, retelling in spontaneously composed songs, which there, which is a very, which is an an expertise of the cowherd boys, along accompanied by flutes and homemade. Uh, handmade instruments and horns and so forth. And also the chiming in of the cows, very just, it's an orchestra. It's a, it's a full on orchestra. And, and then, and then the, and the song, the verses, right? 
telling, retelling, uh, and in this case, glorifying Balaram in particular for his expertise and so forth. Something that Balaram uh, uh, was excited about and was, was taking it in in full, even while at the same time feeling that, he, as he did later, and we hope we'll get to that while I'm here, um, with the slaying of Balara, uh, Paralambha, which comes next, uh, that really it's the power of Krishna in him that made it possible. One of the theological points here in this regard is that in Krishna Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami, um, in attempting to make the case, important case, for Krishna being the source of all avatars, hmm, he says that one of the evidences of this is that only those demons in Leela who are slain by Krishna himself attain liberation. Hmm? If they were, and he, look, he shows you the history, if they were slain by this avatar or that avatar of an Orion, they didn't get that extraordinary result. You take, uh, you know, the Jai Vijay Leela, for example. Well, they were killed by um, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakasipu. They were killed by Ram and Rav, Ram and um, um, hmm? oh. Hiranyakasipu. Yeah. Well, they were the. the um, yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> By Varaha and the Shingha. Yeah, yeah, and then you have then you have Ram and uh, um, um, and um, who else? Hmm? Kumbhakarna and Ram. And then you have uh, finally Krishna, right? Kills um, um, what is it? Sal Dantavakra and and uh, Sisupal, right? But only only until they're those are the three births, right? Three descents of Krishna avatars, and then Krishna himself. Krishna himself kills the Jai and Vijay as as, as uh, Salva and um, and uh, Sisupal, and then they get they get liberation. So he gives this kind of evidence. Right? So he's saying that this is a special feature of Krishna that no other avatar has. Another reason is that he is you know has special powers and so forth. But here we find that Balaram slayed Denikasura. And although it's not mentioned in this chapter that Denikasura got liberation, earlier on in the second canto, it is mentioned. And it's, it's said either as Sayuja or Sarupya. He attained. So that makes my question, my question, well, I thought only Krishna when Krishna slayed the demons, they could attain liberation. So this is a theological point that Balaram himself hmm, is thought to be embracing that actually Krishna killed through me. Hmm? Hmm? It was his power through through me. I, I, I did this. Of course, another way to look at that is the Krishna avatar, if you will, who is the avatari, but nothing less avataring, descending, is... Um, is properly understood the Krishna Balaram avatar. Hmm? It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam in the in the list of avatars in the third chapter of the first canto. Uh, this one appeared, that one appeared, this one appeared, Krishna Balaram appeared, and so forth. Of course, it does single out Krishna next after that. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. But Balaram is extraordinary. He's not um, an avatar of Krishna. He's a Vaibhava Prakash of Krishna, and the only one in Braj, hmm? his other, other self, so to speak. So some different ways to think about that. But here, nonetheless, the cowherds, part of their kirtan, glorifying Krishna and Balaram, is focused on celebrating Balaram's uh, extraordinary victory. And they're going to report it, you know, to, to the village, who will take it with a grain of salt and think, you know, well, you know, boys will be boys. They'll tell stories. It sounds like a bit of an exaggeration, but well, you're anyway, whatever happened, you're all back here safe. And that's what counts. And, 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 and it will not be a prominent part of their memories. Whereas the cowards will dream about it and repeat it and amongst themselves and, and, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, uh, 
that said, the other half, if you will, or in, in one sense, the better half in terms of the fact that these verses under discussion are showcasing the beginning of Krishna's adolescence, the other half of the kirtan, hmm, hmm, which is in the front of the assembly, as Balaram and his group move to the back of the assembly. Hmm? Hmm? Balaram and his group means those Priyasakas and Sakas um, and um, what do we have? There's four types. Okay. Hmm? Surit Sakas. Hmm? Yeah, Surit Sakas, Priyasakas and Sakas. They're not particularly involved in Krishna's romantic life. Hmm? Uh, extraordinary Priyasakas like the, um, what is he called in, in uh, aesthetic language, Sridham, the, um, he's the most like Krishna, um, the uh, hero. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, Pitamarta, <laughs> special type of hero. Uh, he knows about Krishna's um, romantic life. There's evidence for this, but he doesn't directly participate. There's some indirect participation that's mentioned by by uh, Rupa Goswami. But typically, these three types of cowards, the, the Sakas, the Priya Sakas, and the Suhrit Sakas, hmm, they are not involved in the romantic life. So they are the ones, their kirtan is moving to the background and celebrating and surrounding uh, Balaram, and in the front, Krishna is coming to the forefront, and his Narmasakas are singing and uh, chanting about his glories in particular, and in a language hmm, that has uh, deep uh, um, implications with regard to his budding adolescence and the what's called Purvarag, the Purvarag that's taking place here. Hmm? Um, Purvarag is a type of separate love and separation. Mm -hmm. There are four types of love and separation. Purvarag is the is the beginning, and it's a it's a scenario in which um, young adolescents just entering into pu puberty have fallen in love with one another, and they're feeling that, experiencing that. But they are not have not been able to express it to one another and get it confirmed and so forth. It's a very tender um, period, full of some uh, uh, enthusiasm checked by timidity at the same time. Hmm? Strange combination, and uh, and as a result, there's a union because Purvarag involves a union of dreaming about, for example, on the part of the gopis Krishna or Krishna dreaming about the gopis and falling in love with them in a dream and then waking up finding that they're not there and and, uh, and looking for them the next day, which was the one I saw in my dream. Subal, can you point her out? And she charmed me so much. Or seeing seeing or hearing about him, hmm? hearing about their the object of their love, hmm? um, um, seeing him at a distance, seeing him close, hearing his flute, hearing the cowherds, in this instance, singing about him. These are causes of, uh, of, of poor Virag. Mm -hmm. uh, here, the, 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 the causes are, well, precisely this, the coward boys are singing. Mm -hmm. They're hearing his flute. Um, and, um, and so um, the gopis, as Krishna's moved to the front of the group, the gopis are also moving to the front of the group. And the group, as we heard this morning, for example, the Aprakatli, the same in the Prakatli, that's pretty big, is that everybody in Braj has come to the gate and there they wait hmm, for Krishna's return. The signs of his return are, again, um, uh, like we heard this morning, hmm, similar. What? The cloud of dust kicked up by the hooves of the cows that decorates Krishna's body and 
blo really blocks out the sun, who's embarrassed at this time, at because Krishna Surya Sama, what is it? Krishna Surya Sama Mayandaka. Wherever there is Krishna, there can, the son of Krishna, there can never be any darkness, right? So the sun wants to, lets the, the, the cow dust block it out, give deference to the brilliance of Krishna himself. This is the sun is setting at the time. Um, and so this is one thing, the cow dust, right? And then the sound of Krishna's flute. Here we described the flute in terms of the melody that's typically, um, or the raga that is played at this time, as per the evidence of Priyat Bhagavatamrita, which we heard this morning, the testimony of um, Sarupa, Gopu Kumar. He heard this mega mahala raga. Mega means cloud. So this is a type of raga in Indian music that is, uh, if it's properly... Um, uh, performed, uh, how you say, yeah, um, uh, and and very typically with the with the flute, let's say, then it will cause the mega, the clouds, to rain. Hmm? So this is some science sound that has not yet been fully uh, developed. I've heard there, there's some seeding of clouds that they do in some places to try to bring rain and so forth. But it would be very useful going forward. There's a could be a shortage of rain. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, it's a very beautiful and enchanting uh, melody. And the Krishna is typically playing it at this time on his flute. And it's causing then the, the trees and the plants on the one side hmm, who are trying to keep him in the forest hmm, to ooze sap and pollen and and so on and so forth, the river Jamuna to, to reverse, or to, rather the flowing to stand still. And on the other side in the village, it's causing the, the elderly gopis to breast to flow with, with milk, everyone's eyes filled with tears of love and so forth. Um, as Krishna himself kind of, kind of like the flows into, in, into, in, into the village. And uh, here we have described not only um, in the context of the verse, the, the raga, but the the particular flute. Hmm? So, having heard the enchanting mega mahala raga of the Priyasaki Vamsuli, in the Brahma Samhita we find this term. Hmm? Uh, it's a very nice verse, favorite verse of mine, one of two that go together at the end, really, of the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita. Uh, how does it begin? Uh, Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpa Taramo Dhruma Bhumis Chintamani Ganamai Toyamamritam Kataganam Natyam Gamanam Api Vamsi Priyasaki Chiranandam Jyoti Paramapi Tadasvatyam Apicha Chintamani hmm? uh, as it said earlier in the same text, Chintamani Prakara Sadmasu. Hmm? Prakara Sadmasu. Abode, it's an abode, Sadmasu, Prakara, constructed out of Chintamani. means uh, thought, thought stones. Hmm? It means it's a meditative land. Chintam here means thoughts hmm? and controlled thoughts, concentrated thoughts. Thoughts arising out of a, out of a, a mind that has been uh, uh, completely uh, overridden by or is under the influence of, manifested out of Krishna's Sarup Shakti, hmm? which exists only for Krishna's purpose and pleasure, whose Krishna every desire is fulfilled by the agency of his, of his, his Sarup Shakti. Hmm? So it's a, it's a land where, the, the, uh, as it's said, Judy Garland sang a song famous in a, in, a, in a land where the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Hmm? Somewhere over the rainbow. Hmm? There's more than a pot of gold. There's a pot of prame. <laughs> There's an abode of prame. And everything there, all the places of domicile and all the places of Krishna, Leela Stali, everything, is, it's a Chintamani Dham. 
It's made out of thought stones, hmm? meditative. There, there's, there's thoughts expressing the satyasankalpa, the wish, the desires of the devotees in the context of rasa that from one point of view are their own spiritual desires. Hmm? That's from the, from the Beda point of view, from the Abeda point of view, because they're one with Krishna and different. From the different point of view, it's their own unique desires all for the pleasure of Krishna, hmm? which are then all fulfilled. Hmm? And from the Beda point of view, it's, it's Krishna. Your swarup is Krishna's extension of Krishna's own form through which he fully, more fully, forever experiences himself and tastes bhakti rasa, extensions of his own senses hmm, in the form of so many devotees. Hmm. So a magical land where everything that they dream it comes true, right? Chintamani prakarasodnasu. So Sri Akanta Kantam Parama Purusha. Hmm? Shia Kanta, 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 Kanta. Hmm? So there, unlike Vaikuntha, it's different because there are there are there is one Parama Purusha, Kanta, and Kanta, many Kantas, Shia, many many Gopis, many Lakshmis, Lakshmi Sahasra Sata. Hmm? They are different in number in quantity. And they're different in quality of seva. Hmm? Seva manu, smarami, which will meditate a special kind of service that, as you know from the texts, um, such as the Bhagavad and others, that Lakshmi was stunned by hmm? their, their serving attitude. Hmm? It's different than hers. Hmm? And it affords them a certain intimacy with their husband that uh, to be or just that their desired one that she doesn't have with Narayan. Hmm? She has a transcendental jealousy of that that manifests just for the sake of demonstrating to us how extraordinary it is, hmm? which is further emphasized by the fact that her desire for it and effort for it was in vain. She couldn't attain it. Hmm? Krishna is said to have met her in the brudge, eating roots and... and uh, Things that have fallen from the trees. This is the royal you know, Lakshmi. You can imagine what her diet is in Vaikuntha. Yeah. Um, there's no problem for digestion there, by the way. You can have all the ghee that you like and sugar and so forth. And here she's eating like very, very austerely and wearing a white, white cloth. And so Krishna comes upon her. What are you, what are you doing here? He says, oh, I, I'm here. I want to enter into the rasa dance and experience like these gopis do it. And Krishna says, well, you can't do it like that. That's not how to get here. You can't, can't fast your way in here or just perform austerities. Hmm? Well, how do I get in? He said, it's so easy. Here you've been going through all this effort. It's very easy. What do I have to do? Krishna said, well, it's simple. You, you have to, well, you have to give up your husband. He's talking to Lakshmi, who's, you know, the, the, the very emblem of chastity that household wives are supposed to, you know, uh, see as like the, the example. Chastity to the husband. Of course, Narayan is chaste to her too, but, um, uh, but you have to give up your husband. And she's like, uh, it's like, she can't swallow, you know, hearing that. And then he said, and then after that, you have to marry a gopa. Hmm? And then you have to give him up. And then, and then she said, I'm out of here. You know, like, this is not for me. This doesn't, this is, goes against my stai bhav. I can't, I thought I could fit this within my stai bhav and that Goloka was a part, partial manifestation of Vaikuntha. But I see it's a different place altogether. It's a Maha Vaikuntha where these possibilities exist for those who are fortunate to have that kind of. Um, sentiment hmm? and have pursued it in sadhana systematically by which it can be attained. Hmm? So a special place, Sri Akanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpatarva Drumabhumis Chintamani Drumabhumi uh, it's Kalpatra it's uh, Chintamani uh, Drumabhumi it's a it's a 
there are trees there and they are the druma there are kalpa druma hmm? kalpa briksha uh, the trees are wish fulfilling hmm? and the, the walking is talking the, the walking is dancing i should say the talking is singing and so on and so forth and relative to the point here the dear friend of everyone is is the is the priyasaki bamsi priyasaki hmm? is the flute uh, now flutes are uh, common in Braj. All the cowherd boys have a flute, but Krishna is very, very expert at playing the flute. Mm -hmm. uh, no one can compare to him in his flute playing. And his flute playing is—he um, has different kinds of flutes for different occasions and so forth. But the one that is most um, dear to the cowherd boys is the Vamsuli. He has three types of Vamsis. Mm -hmm. And they're differentiated by their length and the number of holes. So the longest one is called the Bamsuli. It's also called the Anandini because it gives so much pleasure. And it can be heard at the longest distance. So it's the dearest friend of everyone, especially the friend of the cowherd boys, but of everyone because they know then where Krishna is when he plays his flute. They can identify where he is. Go there, find him, think about him, know that he's okay, and so forth. So the, the flute, the dear friend of everyone in Braj, having heard the enchanting raga, Megamalara raga, of the Priyasaki Vamsuli, so dear to the coward friends of Krishna, who now they're dancing and singing, as we mentioned it earlier, has been is, is described singing in Hari Lila, both types of Lila kirtans for Balaram, and now the the the, the Priyanarma Sakas type of kirtan for um, um, hinting about, um, speaking about, and augmenting Krishna's adolescence and romantic romantic life in a language that he can understand, gopis can understand, others can't fully understand, but they move to a little bit of a different different beat, if you will. Uh, so in the midst of this, on the other side, the young gopis rushed in unison to the front of the crowd hmm, with unblinking eyes, longing for the darshan of Shamsundar who's then described in the later part of the verse. So here it's significant that they um, are said to have come um, in, uh, Sameta, that means they came in, they came as one, they were one, they were a group, but they came in unison, they came together. Um, this is of course, as, a, as, a, as an awkward time puberty, it's poor Virag, right? There he is, I feel this way, my friend feels this way, my other Saki feels this way, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, this is something that we're newly experiencing, and we also uh, um, have, we want to express it, but we, we have to hide it at the same time. Now I get encouraged by the fact that I find out, oh, my friend feels this way, and she feels this way. And so then we join hands together hmm, and get strength from one another for the knowing that I'm not alone in this. This is awkward, difficult, exciting, it's somewhat intimidating. And, 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 and I can't let anybody else know, but you know, and you feel the same way. So there's a union that's formed here. A like, uh, a likeness. Uh, uh, what is the term for sadhusanga? Hmm? Swajatiya. Swajatiya. Sadhusanga should be uh, snigda, snigdasya swajatiya, affectionate and of like mindedness, hmm? like mindedness. Right? So they're finding, oh, they're all feeling the same way, they're strength in this, and they're driven, you know, by their now, they're driven by their eyes. Now, it's mentioned here to have the darshan of Krishna, their eyes are like jealous of the ears that have their ears that have experienced the sound of the flute, the hearing of Krishna's glories chanted by the coward boys and so forth. 
and the scene it's it, 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 now, the, now the scene itself is coming they heard that first right and that's drawing them to the, to the front and they've gone to the front of the whole crowd now what could be more obvious i mean they're trying to you know the same time camouflage or hide their love in front of elders and so forth but they've gone right to the front of the whole scene and they're staring with unblinking eyes wide as anything at, at, at this scene in front of them and 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 krishna's of course reciprocating glancing back at them and in the in the exchange of glances then they're exchanging feelings and getting the recognition you think i feel about you as you feel about me, we can't really say much about it, or but some union in the of sorts in the context of the of the separation, poor Virag. Um, and uh, so they, their eyes are uh, emphasized here, unblinking eyes, trying to catch up with what the ears have already experienced. The eyes kind of take over from their minds and bring them to the front where they can get the whole vision and they don't have to look from behind anybody else. Now you'd think that might be a problem because wait, wait a minute, who are these girls going to the front like this? Well, why are you so eager? But nobody has time to think like that because their eyes are all on Krishna from their own vantage point of their own prem, of their own bhav, of their own rasa. All eyes are entirely on, on, uh, on Ram and Krishna. And again, relative to the bhav, so that they're there, there's a, natural cover that takes place for the gopis to provide them the opportunity to get to the front and have this exchange uh, un, uh, uh, kind of invisible uh, exchange with him in poor virag mm -hmm. then what they're seeing besides what they've heard mm -hmm, the singing of the coward boys what they've seen in terms of the, the coward dust at a distance what they're hearing in terms of the flute and so forth and now as he comes closer what they're seeing in terms of him person in person the darshan of sham sundar peacock plume hmm, crowning the curls of his hair adorned with he's adorned with wild flowers from the forest hmm, decorated with he himself is decorated with the with the with the dust raised by the hooves of the cows um in his glance of Prem in Puvarag, all this charmed the girls, as did, the verse says, his um, Charuhasam. Charuhasam. It means his charming uh, smile. Here is a smile which his teeth are not showing. It's like, it's, I don't, yeah, I can't stop from smiling, but I can't show the whole thing here. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's timid, but it's, uh, it's 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 a it's a body language, if you will, by which the gopis can understand. Oh, what message I'm sending through my eyes and facial expressions, and body language. This charuhasam is here. He's responding in kind. Hmm? This is um, hmm? Uh, so this is the this is the beginning then uh, of Krishna's adolescent life, as it's described in the um, um, Bhagavatam, and as the chapters go forward, of course the gopis now become active players in the lila to one extent or another, culminating in in the ras panchajai, the, the consummation of all that's um, gone before in terms of these types of meetings, exchanges, and so forth. Um, which become more and more the subject matter of the text. There's a beautiful um, uh, description of this in Gopal Champu that I'd like to turn to and conclude our discussion with um, that um, gives us a, a, a very nice picture of what's happening overall in the Braj. Because as the girls reach puberty, it's very much time, or according to the system, in that culture, even just uh, we're, we're a little bit late almost to arrange these girls, these girls' marriage. Hmm? Everybody, and I think I mentioned it this morning or the other day, maybe last night, um, in Brudge, all the elders, that is, they want Krishna to marry Radha. 
and all the gopis for that matter. Every every father and every mother thinks, well, Krishna is the best candidate for my for my daughter. So they're all for that. But um, the nature of the romantic life of Radha Krishna, of course, is parakya. Hmm? And according to Krishna's astrological chart, which was done by Purnamasi hmm, and um, discussed with Gargacharya, hmm, Krishna, I think I said last night, had a date with Dharma. Hmm? So he couldn't date Radha. He had a date with Dharma. He's going to have to leave and slay Kamsa, establish a place in Dwarka, become a world-known prince, speaker of the famous Bhagavad Gita, and so on and so forth. And village life is in the dust and in the past. This was a childhood thing, a childhood infatuation, and it doesn't have any practical um, uh, support to it. The stars are not aligned to uh, for, for this to be a, uh, a happy marriage. And, and of course, Paraki is not in the stars either. That <laughs> that's off the map. Well, I guess it's there, hidden. But um, but at any rate, Purnamasi becomes aware of this and shares the discussion with uh, with uh, Gargacharya, and then the elders need to be informed of the situation to their dismay. Hmm? And gradually, the reason that the, the the betrothing of the girls to others. Hmm? is delayed and comes to the point where this poor Virag has already occurred, the poor the, the Vyusundi has come, the, they're, they're already entered the puberty. It would have been arranged earlier. The reason is because they themselves, the elders, are putting it off. It, it just doesn't, this doesn't work, that they'll be married to somebody else. How can, it, they're, they're, they're having difficulty dealing with it hmm? because they want, like everybody, the gopis and Krishna, to be united, but given the nature of the of the Prakat Leela, Srup Shakti is orchestrating, they have to acquiesce ultimately, hmm? and they then a reluctance is, is is given into, and the practical side, the elders with common sense and reason and so forth, not to be swayed just by emotion with concern for their daughter's well being. Hmm? Can't marry some guy that's going to go away and never return. It would seem. Why would he return to a village and, and coward life when he becomes a prince? The whole world, right? Celebrated him and Balaram both. Well, such is our fate. So reluctantly, they make arrangement. For Krishna to marry others. Now, I want to make a point here that's worth mentioning as an aside. Sometimes it's said by those who have some feeling for Madhurya Rasa that during the Brahma Vimohan Leela, um, Krishna manifested himself as all the coward boys, right? Hmm? That Brahma thought he had stolen. Right? Yeah. And, and and therefore, at that time, all the coward girls were betrothed to the coward boys who were after Krishna. Hmm? But that doesn't, that's not a good idea. <laughs> there are problems from the point of view of Sakirasa. Someone may say that um, eh, from the Madhurya point of view, just to emphasize in his or her mind that Krishna's the wife, the husband of the gopis. They never married really anyone else, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we had to look a little deeper and, and, and consider that if you want to be a gopa, you don't want to be married. And you certainly don't want to marry a gopi and then hold her back, right, from entering the prakat, the, the, the rasa lila. No, that doesn't work like that. <laughs> so these, these, these young boys are eternally so. They're not married. Hmm? They're not brahmacharis. I don't know what they want to call them. You know, they're <laughs> Krishna's a brahmachari, right, you know, in, in, in quotations as it's mentioned in Gopal Tapa and Upanishad, the gopis are going, Krishna's the Brahmacharya, and scratching their heads. They need the advice of, oh, what is his name? Durbas, to straighten the, the whole thing out, <laughs> to make sense out of it all, right? He's wearing saffron all the time, Krishna, different shades of saffron. That is this typical, typical um, 
color of dress uh, with that with that in mind right so anyway they're not they're not married but the, and and for that matter the, the the teaching is very clear by the founding acharyas and their commentaries that that they were they're kind of imaginary husbands hmm? they're kind of above of it um Krishna's uh, Radha's husband is a manifestation of Krishna himself. Uh, what is his name? Uh, Abhimanyu. Yeah. So um, some arrangement is made, and now the gopis have been informed about this. Hmm? And so, as Jiva Goswami described in a unique chapter of his own a composition, his Gopal Champu basically is a reiteration of the Prakat Lila as it's described in the in the Bhagavatam. But he has a couple of chapters that are unique and then he's not found in the Bhagavatam. This is one of them we're turning our attention to as it as it applies to the um, pertains to this the discussion. And uh, and it goes like this <laughs> that they um having realized that they had now been betrothed to some other man than Krishna whom they all realized amongst themselves that they, they all had a desire, you know, to marry. They were all a, a, of a like mind. They loved him equally, um, and, and 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 no and no one else. It, 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 just as you should understand too, this as Krishna is starting to manifest the symptoms of Kishore psychologically and physically, physically like the broadening of his chest, the strengthening of his legs, and and um, the. Um, um, his hair turns from brown to black, hmm? and uh, it's said that his complexion is dark, but it has a shine that seems to be coming from a, kind of a golden luster that seems to be coming from within. That's very confusing hmm? to himself and and, uh, and others. Hmm? Radharani, of course, and the gopis, they have a, they have a, like a monsoon cloud darkness inside that causes tears to constantly pour. Uh, from their eyes. Krishna's eyes at this time start to, that's when they start to grow and sideways and touch his ears mm -hmm, that are bewildered by the fact that as Krishna enters into his adolescence, when he's supposed to be silent, he speaks. When he's supposed to speak, he becomes silent. They're trying to figure that out. What's going on with him? The eyes are going there to see, see if they can help to resolve the, the issue. This is, this is a very <laughs> confusing time. <laughs> hmm. and so they're developing these, these, uh, these, uh, these symptoms. And anyway, they all get together, the gopis, they, they all, they, they find themselves together. They go to the bank of the Jamuna, all with the same intention. Hmm. And they find, Oh, you're here, you're here. And, we, and again, we're all together in this. And their intention is, well, they're going to enter into the Jamuna and take their lives hmm? rather than have um, uh, to be married to, to someone other than, than their, their love. Hmm? This, of course, is what Krishna says is, is, is the best kind of marriage. It's called the Gandharva marriage. It's based on infatuation. It has the greatest potential for sticking hmm, together, I guess, it was his, his idea. So um, most of you are combined by that, uh, come together on the basis of that. You've got a Vedic, you know, it's authorized. So anyway, they enter into the Jamuna holding hands and they're chanting a mantra together. Asli Shiva Padarit, no one has that verse. Ayi Nanda Kingkaram, Ayi Nanda Tanuja Kingkaram. This is, they're singing like this from Shastaka. A verse like this, they're saying. How can it be any different, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, in Asakti, he's now become attached to the, not only to Bhakti, Mama Janmani Janmanishwari, Babatat Bhakti Rahoituki, and Nadanam Najanam Nasundrim Kabitam Ba, Jagadish Kamaye, Mama Janmani Janmanishwari, Babatat Bhakti Rahoituki, Paramatma has no bearing over me. He's the presides over the world of desires for for so for emotional uh, companionship, for wealth, for learning, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundrim, Kabitamba, 
none of these things interest me. Hmm? But now the, the, the Lord of my life, hmm, Krishna himself, has taken the place of the Paramatma in my heart. And I, and I don't even care for becoming free from birth and death, a cycle of birth and samsara. That, that doesn't matter. Hmm? I only want bhakti, it's ruchi. From there, he becomes attached to bhakti and now to the object of bhakti, which pertains to the specifics of his own ruchi, hmm? own taste. Krishna's taking a certain form now relative to his ruchi. And here, of course, in Shikshastaka, Mahaprabhu speaking, that he sees uh, uh, himself in, 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 in Gopi Bhav and Krishna accordingly. So he says, uh, I want to become a maidservant in the house of Nanda Maharaj. Where the, uh, uh, where the, where the father of the son of, of Nanda. So the, the, typically the wife will marry the son and move in with the family of the son. Hmm? She will be the wife of Krishna and the maidservant within, within the, the family, assisting the, uh, his elders, his mother and his father. This was the system, right? So they make a prayer like this. They make a vow. Hmm? If we cannot become... Uh, maid servant in the house of Nanda Mar, maid servants in the house of Nanda Mar, which means if we cannot marry Krishna, then our lives have, have no meaning. Hmm? Radharani is also a little embarrassed. Hmm? She's thinking, my parents, my parents, they're so virtuous, they're so dharmic. Hmm? And here I am, look at my pitiable condition. Hmm? It's such and I can't stop it or control it, that I will ruin their reputation. Hmm? By being a girl that follows her heart, that leads her away from Dharma. Hmm? I want to marry him, even though I'm betrothed now to somebody else. Hmm? I cannot listen to, to that arrangement. I cannot adhere to that arrangement. Hmm? I'm driven by my heart to move in another way and it will ruin the reputation of my parents. My life is ruined. Hmm? No, it's, it's a very pitiful condition, she thinks. What, oh, what has God done to me? Hmm? What have I done to deserve this? God, hmm? I was a pious girl too. And this, is, this, is, this evil fate has, has befallen me. Oh, so enter the river. What can I do? Hmm? Rather than let that happen, of course, I won't let one thing happen. I won't marry somebody else. I can't do that. Hmm? And the other thing is, well, I, I can't do this to my parents either and just run away and, and marry Krishna and, and ruin their reputation. Oh, the shit. The Brish, Brishubhana Maharaj, you see what his daughter did? And, and that's it's this kind of thing. So enter the river, this their, their thinking. And other gopis, similarly. But... From the sky, a sound, an oracle comes and says, don't do that, and, and you will never have to marry anybody else. Don't worry about that. And so they're stunned and shocked, right? And then the goddess of the river appears, sends them to the shore, where Rinda Devi has assembled Madhu Mangal and Puramasi. These three are very important figures in, in, in Krishna Leela. And they all lean a little bit on the side of Krishna, hmm? as, as his helpers. Hmm? They love Krishna, they love Radha, but they're a little leaning on the side of Krishna. And, and of course, amongst them is this jolly fellow, Madhu Mangal, we've heard about, who's now appearing for the first time. Hmm? Um, not for the first time, he appears when Purnamasi herself appears in Vrindavan before Krishna is born and predicts the birth of Krishna and the inhabitants who have all been hoping that Nanda would have a son find out from her that it's, it's about to happen. So they celebrate and they give her a little kutir. They build a kutir for her and Madhu Mangal, her companion, maybe like grandson, right? And, and so he's there, but he doesn't appear until this point, this is the Kishore stage 
of Krishna's Leela. And he's a very, as we say, a very, he's a Vidusaka. So he's a jester and uh, tends to be rather uh, frivolous and so forth. But there's never a time in the whole Leela that he's more sober than this. He's looking and seeing these gopis, how they feel, how what they said, and how they reacted to this. He's digesting all of this, and it's very overwhelming. Hmm? When they come to the shore, anyway, the gopis, they're assured by Purnamasi, who gives a whole, like, parakya tattva shiksha to them, which goes completely over their heads. Hmm? All this theological details of you're not really going to be married. You don't have to worry about that. Actually, it's a swakya, but it appears as parakya. From the point of Siddhanta, you're always married. You know, they go, she goes on about this. Mount of Mongols kind of, kind of taking it in, you know. <laughs> uh, and Brenda Davies, you know. But it's over the gopi's head. But the, the feeling behind uh, Purnamasi's uh, siksha uh, is, is just enough. Hmm? And sometimes that will be just enough for us to, I don't know what Guru Maharaj is talking about, but I feel that he knows what he's talking about and he cares about me. And, and, and so I'm going with that. I have that experience hearing from others at times in my youth. So the feeling behind what she's saying. And, and so they to get some assurance from the, from the three, hmm? vocally from um, Purnamasi and Rinda Devi and, and, and they're like seeing Mother Mongol for the first time. And, and uh, he didn't say anything at the time, but he's there also to assure them. So the, 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 with that assurance, they'll go forward and, and see how it, how it plays out, right? Which is the whole parakee, Leela. They never get found out and so forth and so on. It all works out. Meanwhile, Purnamasi goes with Mother Mongol and Brinda Devi to find Krishna, to report to him you know, what has happened. What, what's going on behind the scenes here. And they, they meet him meditating on a moonstone, hmm, sitting on a moonstone, meditating on, on how to attain Radha's hand, basically. And Purnamasi uh, breaks his meditation by speaking in a way that reveals she knows what's on his mind in his meditation. She says, what will be hard for you to attain? Why will it be hard for you to attain your goal? Hmm? when you have attained people like us to assist you. Hmm? And he opens his eyes, and there's the three of them <laughs> magically. Hmm? And so he feels, oh, I've got some help here in this, right? God has sent some help hmm? through my meditation. They've appeared out of my meditation. They're part of my chintamani, my thoughts, you know, uh, process, which is true, right? And so uh, uh, Purnamasi reveals briefly what took place but takes the opportunity now to take the hand of Krishna and put it in the hand of Madhu Mangal and say I give you Madhu Mangal he will assist you in this and then they embrace and weep Krishna and Madhu Mangal this is the meeting of, of these two friends right? and Krishna now Madhu Mangal will move into the house of Krishna, become the pujari there and the fast friend of Krishna. Hmm? Everybody comes to wake up Krishna, all the cowards in the morning and Madhu Mangal's there already with Krishna. Um, uh, so that this, this is a very, very endearing um, you know, moment. And Krishna is eager to share this new friend, peculiar you know, fellow. He's not a coward, hmm? but he is uh, a sakha. And he's a, a vidusaka, a jester, but he's a narmasaka at the same time. He's a narmasaka who's not a cowherd boy. He's not kind of an example that we follow to become a narmasaka, rather someone like Subal, Lujbal, and so on and so forth. But he's very important. And Krishna wants to share him, this newfound friend, which is a great treasure for him with all of his friends. He's eager to rejoin the, 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 the cowherds in such leelas, but at the same time, he's uh, somewhat uh, bewildered by what's just been described by Purnamasi, and he wants some details from 
Mother Mongol. Hmm? Well, what was she actually saying? And what was going on there at the, at the river and so forth? So I've written a little something and we'll, we'll read that and, and bring it into our discussion this morning. <laughs> Without, without knowing exactly what Purnamasi had said to the gopis, it's hard to pay attention, but again, he was assured by her, the tone of her voice. Krishna asked Madhu how the gopis responded to Purnamasi's siksha, whatever it was. Madhu Mangal said, they bowed their heads. Their breasts became moistened by their shower of tears, which in turn caused Tamal trees to wither. Tamal tree is a dark tree. The Krishna is compared to the tamal tree. Tamal tree. So replied Madhu Mangal, as if to say that they had Krishna, whose complexion resembles a tamal tree, that had, had Krishna, excuse me, whose complexion resembles a tamal tree, seen them, he would have withered. Hmm? This is what he's saying. If you had seen them, hmm? you would have withered hmm? as they wept hmm? and wetted their breasts with their tears, their chest, their breasts. Hmm? Krishna, uh, uh, Krishna says, do you know what was on their mind as they entered the Jamuna? Yes, Madam Mungo replied. How do you know? Krishna asked. They constantly looked at the tamal tree, which is a color similar to yours. Krishna replied, please say more about this. Manamanga said, I know because of what the river goddess said. She lamented when the gopis entered the river and related their intentions to us af afterwards. Radha entered the river saying, May Nanda and Yashoda be my in-laws. May Krishna be my husband. So, any question? Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, he was happy with that. And then they entered the forest and reunited with the friends. And as he walked away, of course, Madhu Mangal became his physical support also. How did Krishna, what did Krishna say? He couldn't speak. He was overwhelmed in ecstasy and emotion at the thought of their, how they felt, given that he felt the same way about them. He needed Madhu Mangal's support. He lifted him up, held him as they went back and entered into the greater group of coward friends. Mm -hmm. Another question? Yes? Well, I was wondering, um, can you hear me? I can. I, up, right? uh, I, just uh, I never heard about the significance or like how God needs help from his friends. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the significance of that, that help. How does God need help from his friends? Yeah. How does God need help? with a little help from her friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I don't think that God needs much help from his friends. I'm not sure if God has any friends, but Krishna has friends and Krishna needs their help. So that's an interesting theological point. And the point is that within the context of our spiritual perspective, Gaudiya Vaishnavism, there's an expression of divinity, Narayan, who is God. Hmm? And he is worshipped how you would think God was worshipped. Like, oh my God, God. <laughs> and there's a, some distance between the worshipper and God. Hmm? The distance of, of, of reverence. There's the object of worship. There's the worshipper. And then there's the worship. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, the Greeks, I guess, refer to as agape, mm -hmm. which is different than eros, mm -hmm. or having a bromance, as they say, right? Those types of loving 
relationships it was thought don't pertain to a relationship of divine love, hmm? right? Those are worldly types of love, brotherly loves, brothers and sisters, uh, as we used to think when we were, when I was young, all the girls were sisters and all, the, except the one you liked the most, but, and the, and, the, and the guys were brothers. It was the common terminology of the day. And, uh, and um, so, so that, those types of love, uh, friendly love, romantic love, um, parental love, that pertains to the world, but not to divine love, which is of a different nature. It's like a love of service, worship, awe, reverence. Hmm? And as I said, in such, there's a, there's a distance between the object of love, God, the devotee, the lover, or the worshiper, and it's bridged to some extent by, by worship, which is kind of weird, you know? It's kind of like, I mean, when you love someone, it, you, you know, you know how to do that. But then to offer things and chant mantras and so forth, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a bit distant comparatively hmm, to the, the kind of worldly love that we experience. Um, and so in our um, theology, there is a manifestation of divinity that is God, and he's worshipped like that in a spiritual world called Vaikuntha, which means beyond, without, without any anxiety, something like that. He's depicted as four-armed, hmm? because he can do things that you can't do if you only have two arms. He's God. Hmm? That's the way of kind of speaking about his omnipotence, right? Hmm? And in an experience like that in meditation, as well, there are descriptions of such meditation on the part of saints who worship in that way. Now, um, that said, um, this type of love of God is um, transcended, in a sense, by the possibility of loving God intimately in the way that you might worship or the, the, the way that you might love a friend. Hmm. let's say hmm. that's arguably a more intense kind of love or a lover or a child hmm. people go to church on Sunday but you know how they love their kids every day of the week you know and then they're tending to them constantly right so it has more intensity so the question is is there the possibility of that kind of intensity of love for God hmm. Is there a, that possibility? Does that exist? Hmm? Friendship. Let's take friendship because you ask about friendship and we're discussing it also here. So friendship is a very interesting um, type of love that in effect, um, even in the worldly sense, has a semblance of divinity to it in comparison to erotic love or, or parental love or um, the love of a servant, a uh, student for the teacher something like that. Um, the reasoning behind this is something like, well, let's say um, romantic love or parental love are biologically mandated. Hmm? <laughs> it's not a free choice. Hmm? Spirituality should be something that's not biologically mandated. Hmm? It's independent. It's a free choice, I'm thinking the virtues of Sakiras from an ordinary point of view, if you will. <laughs> it's a free choice. And also in fraternal love, one is brutally honest. Hmm? Tell it, you tell it like it is, right? So that has a, a spiritual kind of quasi dimension to it. I'm gonna, okay, you know, your lover may have told you this, you know, your kids might have told you, I'm gonna tell you the facts, okay? Because I really care about you. This is what you did, and this is what it's like, and that's what you, how they have to make up for it, or whatnot. So there's there's certain elements to fraternal love in this world that, um, uh, if if we think about it deeply, more than the other types of love, it has a um, 
a kind of a quasi spirituality to it. Another another aspect um, in romantic love, three is a crowd, right? Hmm. Well, these days that could change. <laughs> uh, I still think that 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 becomes true at a certain point, no matter how you how you, how you look at it. But at any rate. In friendly love, hmm, the more the merrier. The more you have friends, the more the friendly love increases. Hmm. It's not the same in, 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 in romantic love. Hmm. In friendly love, also, or in romantic love, if romantic love is to endure, hmm, where in this world people fall in love, they get married, it has to turn into friendship because the infatuation is only a phase of it. It turns into friendship and we, we carry on. Hmm? So for it to endure, it has to become friendly. <laughs> in, in parental love also, for it to endure, hmm? at, as the children get older, the relationship with their parents has to become friendly. Hmm? Right? <laughs> In fact, yeah, also you start to advise them sometimes, you know, it's not so for the parental love to endure, it has to turn into friendship. So there are some ways in which we can extol the virtues of friendship and also see it as kind of a cast it in a kind of a quasi spiritual light, if you will. So, given that fact, if we were just to look seriously at, at, at love and different types of love, then we might ask. Well, is there any possibility for there to be divine love in friendship? Is it possible? Hmm? And if it was, where would we turn to find out about it? And unequivocally, the answer is, well, you've got to turn east. Hmm? You've got to look to India. Hmm? You're not going to find that in the Abrahamic religions. Hmm? That's not going to be possible there. Hmm? In India, there are many faces of God. There's one God, ultimately, but he had many faces hmm? and reciprocating with different, uh, with different types of love. Hmm? So we, if we turn, and if we turn eastward, hmm, what will be the guiding star? Hmm? That will be the light of the Bhagwat, hmm? which is a Purana hmm? and speaks like a friend. Of course, it also speaks like a lover. It also speaks like a like a king, hmm? which just highlights its speciality and the reason for taking shelter of it hmm? as as the as the guiding light for understanding about God. Hmm? So, so so in then in that text, that particular text, that particular scripture which is, as we see it, the center of all the sacred texts of the Hindus that orbit ar around it hmm? and can be understood in context uh, with what is said in, in, in that particular text. There we find this possibility hmm? of loving God in such a way that, that rather than there being an object of love and object of worship and the worshiper, the distance to which is bridged by worship, hmm? the distance between the object of worship and the worshiper is bridged by this intense love that is similar to worldly love. So there's no, in, in fraternal love of Krishna, for example, or in romantic love of Krishna, or in parental love of Krishna, Krishna is that form of divinity that affords that kind of intimacy, hmm? right? And so there's no worshiper and worship. There's to, the, the, the bridge is bridged. Hmm? The two become one, right? Hmm? So in order for the two to become one, not only does the devotee have to become divine in nature, hmm? right? But Krishna has to become like human, like the devotee. <laughs> both they both have to meet on some common ground, right? So he who is everything has to become now the friend of 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 of, 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 of his devotee. 
It's very extraordinary. For there to be intimacy, the infinite and the finite, for them to be close, the, fi the infinite has to take on a finite-like nature hmm? so that that intimacy can be uh, afforded. Hmm? That's, what, that's, what, that's what Krishna means. The, the word Krishna means that. So he takes the, God takes the shape that's not like God. Hmm? That's why I say, I don't think there is any, God has any friends, but Krishna has friends. Hmm? So I mean, he is God, but, but actually in the setting, he's not thought of as such. He's not as experienced directly as such. That's kind of like the background of it all. Hmm? Hmm? What's in the forefront is friendship. And um, because the friendship is truly real, hmm? he feels as just like his friends feel for him. This is a, a particular quality of Sakuras in particular. Hmm? That just as exactly as Krishna's feeling, they're feeling. So if they have a need for a friend, then he has a need for them as friends also. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's a very complex but interesting and charming theological uh, perspective. And I've given you some good reasons to think of Krishna as a friend. This is also a, a sadhana. Hmm? Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. It's one of, think of Krishna as a friend. Hmm? You can do that. You may feel, I should think of him as God. I can think of him as a friend. And you'll become his friend. Hmm? Yeah. Another question? Yes. Um, so earlier in the lecture, you um, mentioned something. Unfortunately, I can't piece it together. Um, so you said something about um, the gods of Goloka or the gods in Goloka. So I was just wondering... Um, I was just wondering, um, do you, so I don't think you were referring to Krishna, but do you mean like the Yamuna Devi or do, do you remember? You, you mentioned I mean, something Yamuna about. Yamuna Devi? Yeah, you Since, mentioned something about like the gods of yeah. the Loka. Well, I, I mentioned that uh, Yamuna Devi, Yamuna manifested as a goddess hmm? and advised the gopis. But I think what you're asking about is that are there gods in Goloka? You see, the, the setting of Goloka is human like. Right, it's called the 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 Deva Lila, but it's still it's human like, um, and so th there's th th there's a rising and setting of the sun, for example. Hmm? We heard it this morning, Bhopu Kumar said, and it was just like Mathura, and the sun was rising and setting, and but it's different at the same time. So there are gods there. Hmm? For it to be human-like, there have to be gods also, right? Krishna's not the god. He's a friend. He's the lover. He's the child and so forth. But there are gods. But the gods are all devotees. They're not like, in this world, there are gods that are devas, that are, that are semi-gods, semi so to speak. They have aspects of nature that they, um, the macrocosma, cosmic features of nature that they preside over, whether they be wind or sun or, uh, you know, or whatever it may be, um, that, are, that are microcosmically, you know, we're dependent upon with our eyes, sun to see, with air in order to breathe and speak and so on and so forth. So, so we, we worship, venerate the sun and the, and the, and the, and the, and the wind and so forth. And because we're, expressing uh, thankfulness that our human life is possible by these elements, ingredients, aspects of, of nature that we're dependent upon. We're not just independent. Um, we're not out to just conquer over nature. We're, we're, we're into regard nature. We're not trying to create, for example, a robot that actually feels because God's already done that. <laughs> He's created. That's what that's what our the subtle body is. It's 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 the, the feelings go on in the mind that is turned on by consciousness. That's what's already happened. So to speak, God already did that a long time ago. They're they're excited in artificial what is it called artificial intelligence. They're going to create the. And if they could create a perfect robot, there's another way of looking at it, a perfect robot that actually had feelings. Hmm? They, 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 so they created in a laboratory a human being, and therefore they thought, see, now we've done away with God. 
He actually has feelings. If that robot was really like a human being, it would start to wonder, is there God? I'm not sure. I feel that there is. <laughs> you can't get away, can't get around this. You know. <laughs> so, so there are gods and goddesses there also. They they're, they're, they're have a particular type of dasya rasa in, in Golok, adikrita dasya. Yes. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, yesterday in, in your reading in the morning of Abarahna Leela, yes. uh, when you turned to Vraja, you first described how the, the cows are coming towards, towards uh, Vrindavan and, and uh, Krishna Balarama in the middle and the covered boys are around and they are chanting. But then from there you kind of went back then to Krishna returning and, and so on. Was that because you were, was it like two different? I didn't kind of catch how they, they, they went together, those two episodes. In the two different readings? No, no, it was uh, all yesterday in the morning. And I'm not sure quite clear what the question is exactly. Well, uh, uh, you, you first you spoke about Gorlila. Oh, Gorlila. No, and then you went to, to Vrajalila. Uh -huh. And then in the beginning of the Vrajalila description, you described how, how they were herding the cows towards Vrindavan. Krishna and Balaram were in the middle. Yeah. The covered boys were around. They were chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, and then you went on, but then you, it seemed like you went back in time then to, to uh, Krishna coming back and, uh, and Balaram being there already. Or, or I, did I dream something? I, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a copy of it. I'm sure it all makes sense. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell from your question exactly what. what Wasn't it like that? Yeah. 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 It, it, there was something. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have it here. Shall I read it? No, it's going to take a little time. So. Another question. Go. I'll look it up and get back to you. Hey, what was uh, Subala's own plan with the stealing of Madhumangal's ring? Now you have to wait for <laughs> him, to, him to reveal that's a secret. All right. We spent a good amount of time together, and, and I'll try to. They come again in the evening at what time? Six? Is that the time of the lecture in the evening? Yes. Six o'clock. And some devotees were, uh, some of my students were going to see me at 11.30 this morning. Those who were scheduled to do that should come at four o'clock instead in the afternoon. All right? Pardon me? Four o'clock. All right. Bhagavad Gita Bindu Kija, Bhagavad Pramanandi, Adi Bhav.